Thank you so much for joining me, Right Riders, for today's Q&A live stream. Uh, let me know how everything sounds. Uh, sorry I'm late. The uh, computer decided that now was the time to reboot. So glad to see everybody here. Let me know how we sound. And let me know where you are actually watching from, whether it's the live or on the replay. Let me know where you're watching it from, because I'll be honest, in 2022, I'm actually thinking about maybe doing some meetups. And so I would love to hear where you're watching from. So maybe we can do some kind of meetup. All right. So I'm going to get some coffee because really can't be coffee with Keith without a little bit of the old cup of joe all right let's see all right ron's in the house cleveland ohio nice ohio is about 10 hours from here if i remember correctly um, my boy dale L. roberts he's right there in columbus so he's not too far from you good morning mr ron how are you i hope you're doing well glad to have you here on this uh, brisk Wednesday morning here in Missouri. Um, I only plan on being on for probably about 30-ish minutes. I know we started a little late, so if I go a little over, that's okay. But um, but yeah, 30 minutes is about what I plan on doing. So if you have any questions, make sure that you drop them in the chat now. And on the replay, you can always put them down in the comments, and I answer all the comments when they come in. So um, give or take some hours. But um, I always answer them same day. Yes, Mr. Ron. Um, yeah, we're doing we're doing well. Um, uh, last week was actually pretty pretty uh, eventful. Um, I actually had to take the vet, or actually I had to take my oldest dog, who's thirteen, to the vet. Um, she had to uh, actually have a little bit of surgery, but she's doing doing well. Everything looks good. So um, I, I wasn't too happy with the bill, but <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I will tell you, since I, I don't really see any comments or any uh, questions rather right now, um, one of the questions I've been getting a lot lately, especially in uh, both in, in comments as well as in my, uh, I get emails, and if you want to email me, you can email me at Keith at kwheelerbooks.com. And um, the questions tend to be about Amazon ads. Um, and I'm wondering if it's because we're now in Q4 and people are cranking up those ads and trying to really maximize the sales that they get in Q4. So one of the pieces of advice that I would definitely give to each and every one of you that is even considering doing ads, whether it's Amazon ads, Facebook ads, Google ads, whatever. And that is, there are no guarantees. So do not set a budget that you can't afford. Um, watch, you know, watch the ads, um, depending on the budget that you have. If you have a little bit more funds available, then you can check them every couple of days, maybe even once a week. But uh, I always check mine once a day. Um, not because so much about the budget, but I'm just cheap. And even if I'm staying within budget, I want to make sure that I'm still maximizing my results, which means minimizing the, the wasteful spending. So that would be my biggest advice when it comes to running any kind of ads, whether it's Q4 or not, but especially in Q4, because I've noticed people, um, they, they hear so many great things about Q4 and the sales. And so they, they kind of uh, sometimes have a tendency to overspend in hopes of getting those additional sales, which again, sales are, you know, can be very lucrative during Q4, but there's a couple things. One, like I said, there are no guarantees, but also we need to keep in mind that, you know, when you get sales on KDP, you're going to get paid 60 days from when, you know, when it's shipped, but Amazon for Amazon ads wants, is they're going to bill you, you know, in the current month. So you need to keep that in mind. So you can't spend money that you don't have. So just a little piece of advice when it comes to running ads for your books or for anything for that matter. Okay, 
see if we have any questions. I see a couple of people in the house. In adding keywords, here we go, Mark. Great question. In adding keywords to KDP, can you stuff random keywords within each field or do you need to craft a phrase that makes sense? Well, when it comes to the Amazon algorithm, the, one of the most important things is relevancy. Whenever you put anything in your, in your keyword slots, your book will be indexed for it. Indexed means it's going to show up for that particular keyword or that keyword phrase, or as well as combinations of it, you know, because that's how the algorithm works. But you also want to rank. Rank means where, how high you are up, how visible you are. So if you have one, if you have just random keywords, um, and especially if they're comp they're competitive keywords like you know book or something like that, children's book, you're going to be indexed, but you might be on page one thousand. So who's going to find it? You know who's going to see it there? Whereas if you're picking words that are relevant and less competitive, then what it does is it does two things. When you pick something that's less competitive then yes, you're still going to be indexed for it, but you're also going to rank for it, which means because there's less competition. So you got a much better chance of being seen. But relevancy is super important because that's when the algorithm really will rank you even higher. And how do you determine relevancy? Well, first of all, as the author, you know what your book is about. So you know in, in your heart of hearts what, uh, what keywords and keyword phrases uh, speak to your book the most. But to be honest, Amazon doesn't care as much about what you think about your book as what your as what the buyers think or potential buyers. So the way the algorithm figures out relevancy is based on when they put the the keyword phrase in, are they clicking your book? If they are, then that means in in the algorithm they understand that that means that in the co consumer's eyes that phrase is relevant to that book, which means you're going to rank higher. Now, obviously, the number one way to determine how relevant something is, is with a sale. So if they then cut the customer then buys your book, then that shows that that keyword phrase is super relevant. And so again, you will rank higher. And then of course, uh, getting ratings and reviews, that makes it even more relevant, especially if your consumers, when they leave a review, use some of those keyword phrases in their review. That shows, again, how relevant it is. So the to answer your question, you don't want to just randomly stuff keywords in your keyword slots, not at all. Um, you, you, don't, you don't want anything in your keyword slots because you only have you know seven slots for KDP with 50 characters in each slot. That's only 350 characters. You don't want to waste those characters on things that aren't relevant to your book. Because if they're not relevant, then the chances of them helping you get visibility and discoverability and being seen to, to potentially the right people, it, it's just a waste of space. So make sure that you fill those keyword slots with relevant keywords and more importantly, keyword phrases. You know, it's it's very, the, the less, the Amazon algorithm will move words around, okay, uh, to, to kind of fit what someone had typed in. So if someone types in children's book for eight to 10 year olds and you have children's book and then you have for kids and then somewhere else you have eight to 10 year old, it's going to move those around and yeah, you'll index. But if you have that as one keyword phrase, and again, only if it's relevant to your book, if you have that as one keyword phrase, the less manipulation the algorithm has to do, then again, the more relevant that book is to that phrase. So if the person types in exactly what you have in your keyword slot, then your book is going to show up way closer to the top because it becomes way more relevant. Now, if they don't click on it, then it becomes less relevant. So um, I hope that answers your question. Good evening from Thailand. Good evening to you, Paul. Glad to have you here. Uh, let's see. How do I like the fire under my book? It's a yard and gardening book, but the green wizard guide just won't get going. Is it a bad topic? Um, I mean, I don't think it's a bad topic. I mean, I guess you need to know your, your niche and, and see how competitive it is. I think 
one of your biggest issues may just be how competitive it is. Um, and Green Wizard's Guide, that that could, con depending on what your cover looks like, that could confuse people as far as like thinking it's got wizards in it and something like that. But as long as your cover and your uh, maybe your subtitle, whatever, is clear what it's about, then I don't think that'll be an issue. Um, you know, you're especially now, you know, you, the, your keyword phrase, your keywords, um, both in your title, subtitle, and in your seven keyword slots, those are the best ways for you to get discoverability organically. Um, then after that, it really comes down to running ads. And I, I know I hate to say it because I know that, you know, money's tight these days. But the good thing is, is Amazon ads is, from what I've found, the most um, cost-effective way to uh, kind of pour f fuel on that fire. You know what I mean? And if, and if the fire's not really going, then, you know, maybe put some, you know, it, it'll help kind of get you that visibility that you need for your book to, to get some sales. Now, I will say, I actually have done a video on this. Before you run ads, you want to ask yourself a couple things and you need to be honest. And if you can't be honest with yourself, then maybe you need to ask somebody else, maybe in um, a Facebook group. You know, we do have a Facebook group here for the channel. Um, it is called Self Publishing Today. If you want to join it, just feel free to go on Facebook, look up the group again, Self Publishing Today. Make sure that you answer the three questions. They're not trick questions. They're super easy to answer. The number of people I then get um, denied because they don't answer all three of them just blows my mind. But anyway, the, what you need to ask yourself or have somebody else answer is one, is your cover ready? Is your cover competitive enough to justify you spending money to get more visibility? Um, you know, I've seen plenty of people spending money and then they don't understand why the ads aren't, you, you know, they're getting the, the impressions, but they're not getting clicks. Well, if you're, if your cover isn't ready, I don't want to say anything, you know, disparaging, but if your cover isn't ready, you know, if it's not good enough, you know what I mean? If it's not competitive enough, then it will be very difficult for someone to click on your ad over somebody else's. You also want to make sure that your, um, is your book description dialed in? So that way when someone does click, because when you're running ads, you pay for the click. When someone does click, does your, does your sales page, your book description, does it sell your book? Does it convince them to click that buy button? Um, if it doesn't, then you want to tweak that before you go in and spend money on running the ads. Um, and, and there are a couple of things, like I said, I've got a video on it, but um, I, I think the video says something along the lines of stop running ads. Um, and that's, that's true. If you're running ads, I would suggest stop running the ads until you watch that video and make sure that I think there's like five different um, areas that I suggest you look into, make sure that your book checks all the right boxes. That way, you know, you have the best chance of success when you do run your ads. That way you're, um, you're not throwing money into a money pit that isn't, you know, having a return on the investment. So that, that's what I would say is, um, I'd look at your cover, um, you know, check out your book description. Book descriptions, one thing that I've seen people do too many times is nowadays they're treating your book description like it's the back of your book blurb, and it's not. Um, and this is less so with nonfiction books like what you're talking about, but but just in general, that, that your book description is your sales page. It is the last defense between your customer clicking buy or moving on to the next you know, the next book or the next ad. So you really need to make sure that that book description is doing one of two things. It's either making them want to read the next line or more importantly, wanting to click that buy button. That's it. That's what the sales page is for. So that you don't want a big lengthy one because people, you know, our short, our attention spans are short and, you know, it doesn't take long before we just will click off and, and go to the next big thing, the next shiny object. So you need to make sure that your book descriptions dialed in your, again, your cover, um, make sure that your keywords are on point. So that way you also are getting organic sales that way you're not just relying on your ads. Um, so again, those are some things to keep in mind, make sure that your price is competitive.
Okay. Uh, great question, Ian. Um, do you have a checklist when launching a book? Um, I, I don't have a checklist per se. Um, I probably, sh I probably should put one together. Um, I know Dale L. Roberts, uh, from self-publishing with Dale. He's got a great checklist. Um, so you can check out, um, his channel and just, you know, uh, look up checklist and, uh, yeah, I I personally don't have one that I've uh, put together that's presentable to anybody, uh, but I, I could probably put one together. Good question. Good question. Uh, let's see. Okay, Paul, setting your <laughs> setting aside your modesty, Keith. Please, could you say a little about your personal coaching program? Um, well, I can say a couple things about my, my coaching program. My current coaching program is a 30 day coaching program. Um, one-on-one -on -one. that said, um, I'm currently, um, not, I, okay. So the other thing is that I don't just send people to the coaching page and, and that's it because, um, I don't want to take on any new student until we've, we've chatted usually through a video chat. Um, and that's because I'm, I'm, I don't know everything and I want to make sure that it's a good fit, which means one that you have the drive to, to do your part, because I'm not going to do it for you. That's, that's not what I do. Um, I will do everything in my power to help you give you all the tools that you need. Um, but I, I need to make sure that, that the student is willing to put in the work and the effort to, to do their part and to get the most of the coaching program. Um, but then I also want to make sure that I'm a good fit for you. You know, it, sometimes the the way I teach may not fit for somebody. Um, you know, there are people out there that, that want to take it to the next level and I'll, you know, I'll talk to them and I'll find out what they need and what they're currently doing. And, and I may, and I've done this before be like, I, I don't think I can honestly help you, but what I can do is steer them in the direction of somebody who can. Uh, so those are some of the things that I do in the, in the current coaching program as it stands. Again, it's a 30 day coaching program. Um, that said, I'm actually looking into doing a more of a, uh, a group coaching and uh, testing that idea out um, and maybe even making it longer than 30 days, maybe do 60 days, maybe even 90 days. Because one thing that I have found is with a 30 day program, uh, you don't always see the, the fruits of your labor, um, in time, in, in that 30 day period. So, um, you know, sometimes I, many times I've wanted to extend it. And what I usually will do is I, I do a 90 day follow-up with my students. And so 90 days after everything's done, I check back with, in with them with another video chat. And I'm like, so let, tell me how things are going. So, um, so yeah, so I'm thinking about doing a group coaching program in the, probably in 2022, um, if that's something that you guys think would be interesting, let me know down in the comments and uh, maybe I'll, I will uh, take it more seriously. But right now, that's the coaching program. Andy with Easy Graphics is in the house. Hey, buddy. Uh, Sharon is here. Hello. For those of you who came in a little bit late, don't worry. So did I. <laughs> My computer decided it was going to reboot right before I was supposed to go live. Um, what I asked is, I'm thinking about in 2022, maybe doing some meetups. So let me know in the comments, what state, what country, I don't care. Let me know where you're actually watching this from. Uh, also, if you're watching this on the replay, let me know. And uh, who knows, might actually get to be in a city near you. You're very welcome, Ron. Okay. So Mark asks, is buying your own ISBN numbers worth it? Uh, the quick answer to that is it depends. Um, it depends on what your what your book is, like what type of book you're doing. Um, would I buy my own ISBN if I'm putting out notebooks and journals? Probably not. Um, but if you're if you're building a brand around it, whether it's um, puzzle books or you know uh, fiction, nonfiction, if you're building a brand around it, then buying your own ISBNs could definitely be worth it. But one thing I would definitely say is if you're going to buy ISBNs and you can afford it, I would suggest buying in bulk just because 
just in general, buying in bulk is going to save you money. But keep in mind that um, your ISBN, that the only thing that's really affected by that is the imprint. Um, you're having your own ISBN or not having your own ISBN, using a free ISBN does not mean that your book cannot be in the stores. Does not mean that, um, you know, people, you know, like Barnes, you know, stores like Barnes and Noble aren't interested in your book. They don't care who the imprint is. Um, places like Barnes and Noble care about a couple things. Most importantly, is your book returnable? Um, that's why many books, you know, people say that if your book is with KDP, you can't get in stores, which is complete hogwash because I have my books in over 20 stores, even in cities and states I've never stepped foot in. Um, and if you'd like to learn how I do that, I got a video on that too. But um, but it's, it has nothing to do with ISBNs, or let me say very little to do with ISBNs. Again, it has to do with whether or not your book is returnable because they only have so much shelf space. And so if they decide that they're going to take a chance and and buy you know a, a 10 of your books or whatever, they need to know that if they don't sell in a certain window, whether it's 30 days, 90 days, whatever their window is, that they can send it back and use those credits to buy new books. And so uh, that's one reason why Ingram Spark is really good at, um, at allowing you to get your books into places that are much harder to get into otherwise. Um, so yeah, definitely if you want to be in like Barnes and Noble and, and being with Ingram Spark does not guarantee, even if you, even if you do allow refunds or returns, even if you do allow returns, it does not guarantee your book's going to be in Barnes and Nobles inside the physical stores because um, Barnes and Nobles, depending on the store, there's different regulations that they have in place as to whether or not you can, you know, the, whether they're carrying your book. In fact, they have different, the regulations are different between different stores, Barnes and Noble stores, even just to do a book signing. You know, sometimes all you have to do is just, you know, have a returnable book, you know, through Ingram Spark, and that's all you need. Whereas some require you to have to have um, either an agent or a publicist or a publishing house uh, representative reach out. So it it's crazy. They're basically, even though they're Barnes and Nobles, they're also franchises. And so it, it really depends on a, a store by store basis. So um, long, long answer, but the short answer is um, it can absolutely be worth it. Uh, again, depending on the type of book you're doing, mainly if you're trying to build a brand, if you're trying to build a brand around it, buying your own ISBNs, having your own business name as the imprint definitely uh, makes you stand out above those who don't. But nowadays, like I said, with the, uh, with the, with the print on demand movement, it, it's becoming a less and less um, of a requirement. Also, a good thing about having your own ISBNs is if you plan on publishing through different uh, uh, print on demand platforms like KDP, uh, Lulu, and um, Ingram Spark or whatever, that um, being able to have the same ISBN across all versions or across all platforms for the same version um, is definitely beneficial. So if you want to have it, you know, on Amazon and on Lulu, then it's, it's better if your ISBN is consistent. Um, it just looks more professional. I hope that answers your question. You're quite welcome. All right. We got Chicago. Chicago's in the house. Chicago's uh, probably about eight hours from where I'm at. That's not too bad. Uh, Fall River, Massachusetts. All right. Joseph from Florida. Uh, where in Florida are you at? Because I actually lived in just south of Daytona for about 32 years. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm old. You're very welcome, Mark. Anybody have any other questions? Um, if you came in late and you missed my spiel about Amazon ads, make sure that you go back and later when this is all done, go back and check it out because I, I talked about Amazon ads for quite a bit and just ads in general and some tips, especially for Q4, but uh, more general tips as well on what to do with your Amazon ads. 
because that, that's a question I've been getting a lot lately. So I wanted to, uh, even though I hadn't gotten it yet in the chat, I wanted to uh, give my, my two cents, if you will, on that. While we're at it, let me know if you're doing NaNoWriMo or NoNoWriMo or any variation thereof. Let's see. Excellent question, Sharon. Can other authors' names be in your description? Um, technically, yes. Uh, you cannot have other authors in your in your keyword slots, but in your book description, depending on on how they're used, yes. Um, obviously, not you. I wouldn't use them anything in any disparaging way, but um, but if you're you know comparing it to their book in in a positive light, like using it. Um, more of a sales type copy, um, then yeah, you can you can put authors' names in your book description. Um, again, just not in your KDP keyword slots. Now, in your Amazon ads keyword slots, you absolutely can put in other titles, other authors. But yeah, for your book description, it, assume assuming you're doing it um, in a positive light, then yes, you can use other authors' names in your book description. Great question. Money, money. Glad that helps, Sharon. So uh, <clears throat> for those of you who are not on my email lists, uh, I will tell you that there is currently running, as of the recording of this video, uh, there is currently um, a, it's called the Children's Book Mastery Summit. And it is um, over 30 different children's book authors have come together and they're and they're doing presentations. Um, now, if you don't write children's books or you don't have no desire to write children's books, that's fine because there are a lot of um, there are a lot of topics that are more general. Um, like for example, the um, I was uh, I'm humbled and honored to have been included in the uh, list of presenters, and in mine, I'm talking about how to get legitimate book reviews. And so um, there's even a freebie that I give. Um, the The summit is completely free to to participate or to to watch the videos. The videos, last I heard, um, they stay up for I believe it's 24 hours, and then they come down. And after that, then you have to buy a um, a premium pass, I think it is, um, in order to um, in in order to have access, you know, lifetime access to to all the different presentations. But if you just want to watch the presentations within the first 24 hours that they're up, absolutely free. Um, you can just go to, uh, let me just make sure I pull up the right link. It is kwheelerbooks.com slash children's book mastery. Let me copy that. I will put it right here in the chat if it'll let me. What space is in there? Here we go. So, yep. So just uh, click on that. Um, that should bring you there. It's this little sign up. Oh, okay. That's actually not going to work because I put in just out of habit because I'm a writer. I put in an apostrophe for children's. So that's not right. Okay. We'll do this again. Wheelerbooks.com slash. Children's, no apostrophe, book mastery. All right, try that one. Okay. So, yeah, so you can sign up. Like I said, there's 30 plus authors that are in there. Um, things are covered like um, like sales, how to get more book sales, not for children's books, just general, how to get more book sales. Uh, like I said, how to get good, uh, 
how to get honest book reviews, legitimate book reviews, um, all different kinds of topics. Um, it started yesterday and it goes through till Saturday. So um, there's a handful of videos that go up each day. Uh, there's a schedule. If you click on, if you click on that link and you go to the page and you sign up, there's a schedule that shows what what the topics are, who the authors are, um, and what and you know what day and time they're going to be presenting. So um, they're all pre-recorded, so it's not any it's not going to be live. So you won't there won't be any live Q and A. But uh, but yeah, mine I believe goes up next Saturday or this Saturday, I guess. <clears throat> okay, ACX may not be available in some countries. In this case, how do how do you publish audiobooks in KDP? Thanks for your advice. Um, yeah, so you don't you don't really publish your audiobooks through KDP. Um, if you mean how do you get them on Amazon, my number one choice is find away voices. Um, I have access to, to ACX and I have dozens if not more books uh, audiobooks on ACX that said uh, I prefer uh, find away voices because they just have so much more distribution, including Amazon. They even have distribution to the places that Amazon has or that ACX has distribution to, for example, um, iTunes. But with Findaway Voices, you actually get a higher royalty if you with iTunes if you do it through Findaway Voices over ACX. Now, if you you don't have to be as as long as you didn't do the uh, royalty split with ACX, you don't have to be exclusive. Um, assuming you didn't choose exclusive with ACX, but if you're non-exclusive with ACX, you can have it on both ACX as well as find away voices. And so um, even if you're on both, if you're in iTunes for both ACX as well as find away voices, iTunes will give you the royalties from the find away voices version and not ACX. So it's some kind of deal that they've got going on. Um, so yeah, I, I prefer, so if you don't have ACX in your particular region, Absolutely. And even if you do, absolutely. I would go with, um, I would suggest looking into find away voices. Uh, the biggest difference, uh, the biggest way that ACX is, um, better in air quotes than find away voices is they have the option for the 50, 50 royalty split. Find away voices does not have that. They have something similar, um, but they don't have anything where you, you basically don't pay anything out of pocket. Uh, find away voices. Um, they, they have it where you pay, um, less. I think it's, I think you pay half. If I remember correctly, you pay half, um, of the, whatever the price was going to be in exchange, you do share some of the royalties with the narrator. Um, this way the narrator has still gets something for the time that they've put into it. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to audiobooks, you only pay for the finished hour. So if you're, if you're writing a child, you know, if you have a children's book and you're getting it, you know, the audio book. And yes, you can do children's books on audio. Um, so many people think you can't, you absolutely can, but let's say you're doing it. Your book may end up being five minutes long on audio. So if someone's, you know, getting paid, uh, you know, a hundred bucks an hour and it's only, you know, five minutes long, they're only getting paid for the five minutes, not the 10, 12, 15, 20 hours that they put into actually recording and editing and everything else that they've done, they don't get paid for that. They only get paid for that finished product. So um, what Find Away Voices does is they're like, okay, we, we understand that. And so we're going to give them something. Um, so even if they do a royalty split, they're still getting something out of it, something you know tangible, something that they can spend now to pay their bills now. So just an idea. Um, I would absolutely suggest looking into Find Away Voices. There's also one called Authors Republic. Honestly, I don't know anything about it. Um, I haven't heard anything negative about it, uh, but Findaway Voices and ACX are the ones I use. Uh, Andy from Easy Graphics says, I love Findaway Voices. Yes, yep. Appreciate that. You're absolutely, no problem at all. You're quite welcome, quite welcome. Um, yeah, Findaway Voices... Um, 
And and one thing that a lot of people don't know is uh, with Find Away Voices, I mean, they send that goes out to like libraries and everything. Because, you know, I mean, when I was a kid, they didn't really have audio books too much. But, um, you know, but we could, you know, you go to the local library and you can, you know, check out more than just physical books. And, uh, and audio books are, are no different. So you can get audio books from your local library. And yes, libraries still exist. Um, and so Find Away Voices is a great way. And the libraries work a little differently um, through their, instead of it being, typically instead of it being a, a per purchase, they will, you'll get paid more. And because what they're doing is they're buying the, the a different license. So that way they can use it more than once because it's a library. So they're going to check it. You know, it's going to get checked out more than um, more than one at a time sometimes. So um, yeah, find away voices is a great way to, um, to not only get great, great narrators, um, but also um, it's, it's an aggregate as well and aggregates out to more than just the three that um, the ACX does. Excellent, excellent point. Easy graphics. Find away voices. They make it super easy to run discounts and promotions on Chirp and Apple. Um, you know, those are things that you can't uh, you can't really do with ACX. So, um, and, and this isn't meant to be like a punching down of ACX. I I, I get <laughs> I get nice royalty checks from ACX. Um, you know, and they've got amazing narrators. Yeah, I mean, the narrators that I found on ACX, I have probably five or six that I've used on multiple books. Um, a, one for consistency, like if it's if it's in a series, but also just the the versatility. But I found just as much versatility with Find Away Voices. So, um, and, and some people are both. You know, just like as an author, you're not limited to exclusive. You know, to be exclusive with one or the other, uh, you can choose exclusivity, but you don't have to. Um, the narrators the same way. You know, you could find some of the same narrators on both platforms. Um, so I would just say, if you don't have ACX available, obviously look into Find Away Voices. If you do have ACX available, um, I would still look into Find Away Voices unless you plan on doing a 50-50 royalty share. And uh, and if that's the case, then obviously you really have no choice but to go with ACX because they're the only ones that I know of that offer something like that. But, um, but yeah, uh, ACX, uh, just to follow up, ACX doesn't allow for price adjustments. It's it's completely true. Um, so you know, it, it, not only not only like discounts and stuff like that, but just setting your price. You know, ACX says, "Oh, your book is this long. This is what it's going to be." Um, and and it's for I understand it's for continuity, but um, you really don't you really don't get any say as the author um, other than you know what the length of your book is. Um, I mean, you can, you can talk with your narrator, um, and, and I'm not saying this to, uh, milk the system, but you can talk to your narrator if, you know, depending on what your topic is, if you're doing, if your book is, um, a book on yoga or meditation, uh, even though it may be short pages, obviously you're going to want the narrator to, um, to speak a little slower, pace things out better and that kind of thing, just because of the relaxation nature of yoga and meditation and things like that. So it could make a, a short quote unquote book, um, a little bit longer when it comes to actual finished hours, um, uh, for the audio book, but not to the point where it's, it's not giving a good quality content to the consumer because they'll just leave a bad review and then you'll, you know, your sales will tank anyway. So your number one priority, regardless of what type of content you're putting out there, um, Ebooks, paperback, hardcover, audiobooks, no books at all. You know, whether you're doing a podcast or video, the number one thing with your content is making sure that you're giving out good quality content so that people not only enjoy what they're watching, listening to, reading, but that they come back. So, excellent, excellent points there, Andy. Okay, does anybody have any other questions? If not, we're going to start winding down. Let me finish a little bit of coffee here. Um, 
I, when it comes to, uh, so somebody's asked me, um, not in the chat, but actually in an email that, um, if I'm doing NaNoWriMo, um, I am not doing NaNoWriMo right now. Um, I guess you can say I'm kind of doing a version of no, no Um, I've got some puzzle books that I've, uh, I'm getting the covers done on right now and I'm doing, uh, I've got two children's books that are with the editors and I am doing a huge revamp of the self public or the, the puzzle book domination course. Um, I'm actually, uh, pretty much doubling the size of the content. Maybe not exactly, but um, I'm adding about 12 different uh, puzzle types. So uh, those are those are in the middle of being, uh, they're all filmed. They're just, I'm, it's, they're in the editing stage. Um, I'm also gonna, uh, changing the platform that it's on. So there are gonna be some pretty big changes in the in the coming weeks, uh, if not months. I, the goal is to get it all done, um, hopefully before the uh, US Thanksgiving. If not, I want to get it, um, try to get it done before the hol- before uh, the the Christmas holiday. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. the The puzzle types that I've that I've found um, and and researched and uh, have actually sold for me um, that I'm adding in are uh, they're pretty they're pretty cool. I think I I, en- I enjoy doing them a lot. And uh, yeah, so hopefully hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, for those of you who don't have the course. Don't worry if you can't afford it. Completely get it. Um, you will be seeing some more puzzle book um, videos here on the channel as well. Um, not tutorials per se, but puzzle book related, um, like uh, like how to get like how I got my one of my puzzle books. How it actually won an award thanks to Book Award Pro. Um, yeah, actually winning an award for a for a puzzle book. Yeah, who know who would have thought, right? So. You know, some videos on that, uh, some videos on uh, Amazon ads, and uh, I want to do an in, more of an advanced Amazon ads video, so uh, on what to do with your data. Um, so those are some things to look forward to. All right, Easy Graphics says, I am doing NaNoWriMo, but in my own time, I can't handle the pressure. I know I get that. Um, yeah, it was a lot of pressure. I, I did, worked a lot of late nights when I did uh, Nano the first time in uh, 2018. I think it was. Um, yeah, it was. It was crazy. Um, but I mean, I, I do like, I do like the the structure that comes with it. Uh, but again, doing it in your own time. Um, yeah, it's. I, I really like the support as well. Um, you know, it's just a lot of people don't realize this. It's it's actually a company. Um, NaNoWriMo is a company that that does this. It just it just took off. Like I mean, they even have Camp NaNoWriMo in June, I think it is, which is just basically another NaNoWriMo. But yeah, um, doing Nano absolutely on your own time. Uh, the important thing is again accountability. I'm sticking with it. Mark says making puzzle books are great. Took the course. I'm glad you enjoyed the course, Mark. Um, just so you know, the uh, um, the the updates that I'm doing, no additional cost or anything like that. Absolutely, you'll if you're already in the course. Um, even if the price of the course goes up, you you'll still have access to everything that I'm adding into it. So um, I've already if you you know I found out that the the place that it's hosted on Thinkific they don't give you alerts when I add new content. I thought they did. And so um, if you haven't been in there recently, I have actually added in a couple new, um, a new couple new puzzle types, um, like uh, reverse word searches, um, things like that. So um, if you haven't checked that out, make sure that you, you log in and, and check it out. But, uh, but yeah, even if the, the course ends up going up in price, the, if you already have it, then any additions I make will uh, y'all automatically get. And People have asked me, are there any upsells? Um, currently, no. I, I'm not a big fan of the, the whole funnel thing. I know it's the new new thing and it's super successful and it works. Um, I just, as a consumer, I'm not a fan of it. Um, and so um, I, I definitely didn't want my course to, to have that. Um, will there be add-ons that I do in the future? Um, yes, but they are possibly, but they won't be um, in that funnel 
in, like that. They're not like that. Uh, let's see. It reminds me, I'll have to drop you an email on your puzzle course. Okay. All right. Let me know, Andy. I, I'm kind of intrigued now. One of my best sellers is a figure skating puzzle book. Brilliant, brilliant. One of the things I keep telling people, and, and I talk about it in the course, but I've talked about it on the channel as well, is um, regardless of what kind of content you're putting out there. And again, this isn't just with books, just in general. You, you need to niche it down. You know, if when you create something for with everybody in mind, basically you are creating it for no one. You know, line journals, simple line journals, easiest in theory, no, one of the easiest, no content books you can do. I mean, technically, I guess a sketchbook is the easiest, um, but you still need to have a theme, you know, you, for that front cover, it, that's, that's how you're going to differentiate yourself from your competition. And that's also how you're going to better your chances of getting visible is by finding a niche that, that people are interested in, but that there's not a super lot of competition because if there's a lot of competition, like if you just put out a line journal, good luck, brother, because there's just so many out there. But if you find, you know, if you decide to do a line journal for underwater basket weaving with unicorns, then, and, and that's probably not a real thing or at least a successful thing. But anyway, um, but when you narrow it down like that, then your book stands out. And then, yes, you may not be seen by as many people, not as many people are looking for it, I guess is a better way, but not as many people are looking for it, but those that are looking for it will see your book because your, your competition is lower. But again, the important thing is, is making sure that it's in a niche where people are actually looking. So um, yeah, great idea. All right. Looks like I've caught up. Woohoo. Caught up. Time for a sip of coffee. I will tell you, I if, if I sound a little off, um, I always get sick this time of year. Um, I don't know if it's the just the weather changes or whatever, but um, but yeah, so <clears throat> uh nice warm, warm coffee is feeling pretty good on the old throat right now. Um, all right. So if there are no more questions, um, definitely went longer than I expected, which is fine. It's been really great questions and comments. I appreciate it. Um, but I will say, as I start to wrap up, don't let the learning end. If you have any other questions, let me know down in the comments, even after this has gone live or after this is done being live and it's on the, the, uh, the replay, let me know. Um, you know, like I said, let me know where you're from. Um, mentioned it earlier, but I'm, you know, I'm thinking about doing some, uh, maybe some meetups late, you know, sometime during 2022, perhaps. And so, um, you know, if I get enough people in a certain geographic area, then, uh, then yeah, who knows? Might, might do a meetup. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it has to be near me. Um, but uh, obviously if it is near me, then it, it's a much better chance of it happening. But, you know, if, if there's enough people in any given area, um, whether it's here in the States, overseas, I don't care. I've got a passport. I'm good. Um, so let me know where you are watching from. Um, you know, obviously I can't promise I'm going to be in your backyard, but, uh, but you know, maybe we can find some place, you know, close by. So uh, anyway, in the, uh, in the meantime, if looks like there are no more questions. Um, again, if you liked any of the questions that came in here, any of the comments, if you liked my answers, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. It really helps with the Amazon algorithm or wrong one, YouTube algorithm. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm um, to let them know that, that this is good content to, to shove off and, and to uh, suggest for other people. So again, give the old thumbs up a smashy smashy. Besides, it gives me that nice warm fuzzy feeling inside. So until then, I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful November. I hope everybody... Uh, stays happy and healthy and remember to write right.